Okay, hello, greetings and welcome. All right, let's continue with vital breathing. So we've done the building the ball exercise. You've uh, got the feeling of energy. You've, you've gone through the pore breathing. You've taken that feeling between your hands and you brought it in and out of the pores. You've started tuning your fascia to the feeling of life force. On the last video, I gave you an exercise where you take that feeling and you extend it out to the edges of your body. You wiggle your fingers and you wiggle your toes and you close your eyes and then you stretch that feeling, holding the feeling of life force and let your mind go out six meters in all directions. And then we withdrew the mind. We pulled it back very, very slowly and we pulled it towards our center of gravity. The underlying metaphysical reason why this exercise developed so much growth so quickly is because of contrast, expansion and contraction. When your mind goes out, it goes into that field and it gathers the energy out of the field and it sucks it in. We get a huge contrast in space and density. You're taking energy from six meters around you and you're grabbing it and you're pulling it into your dantian and compressing your will into a small space. When you take energy from a small space and you put it into, into, into a, sorry, from a big space and put it into a small space, it speeds up. So we're not only uh, taking uh, volume and compressing it, that compression makes it vibrate more quickly. <clears throat> so we have a contrast between space and we have contrast between speed of vibration and this awakens spirit senses. It makes you feel more. Now, the reason why we move in and out of the body is your spirit senses can't wake up when your physiology is regulating consciousness. When you're concentrating inside your body, there's a tendency for your mind to get trapped by your body. This is why we want to get out of the body, stretch outwards and get the mind to feel out there. From the first exercise, vital breathing in the ball, you're working outside of your body. Willpower, stretch, breath into the ball, you start to feel. Once that willpower and breath reaches a certain density, the life force accumulates and your spirit starts to feel energy. So that's, you need a certain density of energy for your mind to go, oh, what's that? I can feel something and it has to be outside of the body. And then when we do the pore breathing exercise, we're just breathing through the pores, it's outside the body, inside the body, outside the body, inside. Spirit senses are, are allowed to function. If you cultivate chi just inside your body, like a lot of people, oh, just relax, relax, relax in here, you're not going to feel vital force. You need to interact between the inside world and the outside world and bridge it for this awareness and spirit sense to wake up. Going out six meters, it's, six meters is a, interestingly a very, very important distance. Pull it back in, send it back out. Pull it back in, send it back out. This expansion contraction activates spirit senses due to the change in space and the change in speed, density, compression of the energy. From there, we extend it out and then we pull it back in, but instead of putting it into our center of gravity, we are going to put it into our bones. So as we come back in, I want you to very gently squeeze the bones. And you squeeze the bones by opening the joint and taking the muscles and fascia and just by lengthening, squeeze the bone. So as you come back in, squeeze, 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 all the way from your fingers to your toes, even, even around your skull, squeeze everything. And then release that pressure. And I want you to release that pressure suddenly and let the energy bounce out of your body and then go out to that six meter distance. And then get to the edge of the body, move your fingers and toes and out to six meters. Close your eyes once you leave the body. And then pull back to the body, draw it in, be very aware of the spatial wave coming back in, how you're condensing. Now, instead of condensing it in your center of gravity, condense it in your bones. Start gently stretching the joints open to squeeze the bones from your fingers to your toes. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. There's a type of tension in this. And then you reach that compression point of the squeeze, pop, let it go. Open it up, let your mind expand outwards, 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 outwards. Get to the fingertips and then move six meters away from your body in all directions, up, down, left, right, forward, backward, spherically in all directions. Now, 
this bone marrow breathing of compressing the bones and releasing the bones, most people will do it with just breathing in and out around the body. And that works fine. Uh, it's a nice exercise. But when you send it out six meters and you pop when you release, the pressure difference of popping the tension and just letting it puff out, it radiates it out and it generates a type of a wave. So after you've compressed and you release and you just start letting the energy go, you create a wave, like a wave in the ocean, and you ride that wave outwards and let it go. So this, this wave moving away from your body is very, very important. Because we're going to use a lot of different Qigong exercises where we condense energy in the core, condense in the, in the bones, and then wave those energies out. And move gravity up and down your body to create a compression, decompression, to get that wave to move nice and cleanly in all directions, or in a particular direction. So this energy awareness of, of the energy itself, aware of space, compressing it in a small space, being sensitive to how it starts to heat the body and vibrate more quickly, when something get, gets hot, the speed of vibration increases, the friction increases, and it heats up. This will give you keys to the fire element. You have to make the life force condense, heat, and get really, really fast to get this fire element to awaken, to produce pure electric fluid. It'll reach a speed until it makes an electrical volt, where it pulses out of your body, and you have electricity moving out of the body. There's a wide range of metaphysical rituals in which this is a necessity. If you're building elementals, you're charging amulets, you're giving a bishika to people. You need to be able to produce volts. Why? Because it bypasses all protection, security, demagnetizes the mental astral matrixes, and it moves straight through everything like a lightning bolt, bolt and creates very, very interesting effects between the akasha, the mental world, the astral world, and the physical world. So these volts are very important. So in these basic exercises, they're not just, oh, I'm gonna expand and contract vital energy. You're doing them for a very particular reason so do them correctly. Okay. Body mechanics. You want to keep your knee centered. None of this pushing out or pulling in. If you want to push your knees out, turn your feet out so that the two triangles and leg are on the same plane. Your ankle, knee, hip triangle and your, your center of your foot, knee, ankle triangle have to be on the same plane so don't wreck your knees. So correct that with whatever martial tradition you're doing. If you're doing a tradition that does this and wrecks the knees, just turn your feet out, keep the triangles on the same plane, now you're fine. Just fix the problems. The hips need to stretch and lengthen open a little bit. The quads here need to open, 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 open. The tailbone hangs, the base hangs, and it controls the curve of the spine. Now you should have one to two finger width gap on, on your lower back if you're pushing your back against the wall. You don't want to straighten the lower back. This pinches nerves and does bad things to your body. Your body has a natural curve. You have to honor that curve. The midpoint of the scapula needs to be rounded back slightly to round the shoulders to make a very efficient curve between your, between your hands moving through the back. And if you're too squared and your shoulders puffed, you'll disconnect at the shoulders. So there's a slight hole in your chest and rounding. Your chin should be in, the occipital should be open and uh, you can just tuck back. Now, you do that until it's comfortable, but uh, if you have neck problems, you're gonna to go to the place of most comfort, but as long as you don't push your chin too far forward. If you push your chin too far forward, you're gonna get the weight of your head resting across your neck, and you can get a, a reduction in blood circulation to your brain, and the is gonna stagnate in that area, and uh, you're gonna get headaches. So don't push your chin forward, keep your chin back. If uh, you do get headaches, this is a possible one reason why. A lot of fighters will, will, will lean the head forward of the type of intent, and uh, this is going to um, uh, be not good for them. Okay, so, so other aspects of the body mechanics, the way you roll the shoulder down, hang the muscles, hang the elbow, hang the wrist, stretch the fingers. Now your elbow position, if you're working vitally, it's going to be low, it's going to be grounded. Your, your, your knees and your elbows are going to be grinding down to the ground and hanging together to produce connected mass. If you're working in the astral field, you're floating, you're up, you're, you're, you're in the feeling of the astral. Your heels are barely touching the ground. 
and there's a buoyancy. It's like you're floating in a swimming pool. So this elbow is going to be, be suspended and because you're floating in, in waves of astral fluid. This is different to vitality. Vitality is much more elastic, much more rubbery, and much more gravi gravity oriented than the astral body. So when we're doing the, the 100 hours of astral breathing or chi breathing, we're floating. We're floating in the sea of chi. We're moving in a totally different type of space to when we're, we're moving vitally. Vitally, we want to do all the walking to, to have an elasticity in the body, bring your center of gravity into the fascia, and then walk inside that, that feeling of life force all the time. When you eat, breathe vital energy into your food, and then bring the, the food into your mouth, vital breathe into your sense of taste, and vitally enliven your taste buds and taste vitally, not physically. You'll taste different feeling qualities, different taste qualities when you vital breathe. We'll cover that on later videos. For now, I want you to journal your relationship between how your mind identifies with energy. Do you, do you have this, uh, I am me and there is energy and we're separate? Or have you moved to, I am what I feel, I am energy and there's a body there, and it happens to be your body, but you generate more identity with that field of energy. You need to identify with it. And as you identify with it, your will will start to influence it through the identity. If I am me and you are you, I can't affect you. But if I am you, I can affect you. So if my mind is a vibrational match to you, my will can influence you. But it cannot influence you if I'm not matching you. So there needs to be a part of your listening skill that becomes a mirror for whatever you pay attention to. And in this case, the mirror is life force. You want to let your mind become life force while you do these exercises. So, journal. I'm at the stage of, I am feeling life force. I am at the stage of, I am life force. I am at the stage of, life force is responding to my will through the identity of I am life force. And then you move to this type of persistence this conviction where life force does what I want it to do and I can move it up and down the vibrational scale. You can slow it down, move it to the astral. You might have a, an astral attachment stuck to some, somebody or yourself and you get in there and you dissolve it. This gives you your basic magical skill and it gives the framework of what makes these energies work. When you see somebody, what seizes? Magnetism seizes. So you go to the magnetic phase of the seizing, so you pull the joints open, you pluck the back open, you drop the, the hip, stretch the spine, and you create a pulling feeling to seize. Now once you've seized the person's field and you've got them to start locking up, then you can issue. So that needs to be a cognitive, this is how I build these energies process. And you want to deconstruct everything you're doing in your journal. Your journal is your teacher. When you're inside of a feeling of a trance of energy and you have an experience and you have an understanding, move over to your journal while in that same state and write it down. And then when you read your journal and contemplate it later, you'll, you'll get to understand what you're doing, cause, what you're getting, effect, how to refine the cause to refine the effect and develop the skill more efficiently. Your teacher is your journal. You read that, contemplate it, ah, of course. So you develop a relationship with your own subconscious mind and you teach yourself. But you need the journal as, a, as an intermediary between your unconscious mind and your consciousness to transmit data. You are your best teacher. Okay, so um, journal all these qualities very, very, very clearly. If you don't journal them, you're going to be a slow learner. This stuff doesn't take long. It's very, very, very fast. Now, as you go through this process, you're going to get subconscious, um, uh, you know, things that aren't true. Like people say, oh, it takes 10 years to feel chi. No, it takes 10 minutes. It takes 40 years to master the chi. No, it doesn't. It's, it can be counted in hours. Not, not, not years. This is very, very, very quick. 
What decides on how quick you learn is your mind. How flexible is your mind and how well do you understand what you are doing? If you are searching, you're going to have 10 years to find qi and 40 years to cultivate it. But if you're following a very, very clear, concise model and you, your mind understands what it's doing and it's tuning into the right things and it is very, very flexible and letting go of its past belief structures and following its blueprint and matching it clearly, then this develops very, very quickly. What takes time is, is people dwelling in ignorance of how it works. Now, I watched a, a video yesterday where a well-known master said a, said a statement about a grand master. And this grand master said, if a person does yang style tai chi for the whole life and they don't get tai chi jin, they should be ashamed of themselves. I was sort of like, what? No, that grand master should be ashamed of himself because he didn't make sure his students got it. It's his job to make sure every person who does yang style tai chi has tai chi jin. So the shame is on him, not on you. It's the teacher's job to make sure the student is great. Okay, let's leave it there. Thank you.